you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com, thechrisvossshow.com. Hey, we're coming to another great podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Be sure to refer the show to your friends, neighbors, relatives. Tell them to sign up and subscribe to The Chris Voss Show. It's syndicated, like, everywhere. Like, seriously, everywhere. Like, when I Google it, I'm like, who the hell are these people? But, uh, yeah, everywhere. Amazon, from Spotify to iTunes to Pandora, The Chris Voss Show, you can subscribe to just about anywhere and listen on your favorite platform. That sounded like an ad, didn't it? Also go to youtube.com forward slash Chris Voss. Hit the bell notification button because it gives you that special feeling. Like even if you hit the bell notification, you can hit it again and and then make sure you hit it again so you resubscribe. But it, it just gives you this feeling that washes over you that you're just like, I belong to something much bigger than myself and a place that loves me and doesn't judge me. What better place could that be than the Chris Voss show? Go to youtube <laughs> goodreads.com forward slash Chris Voss. All the groups we have on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all the places all those kids are at these days. Today, we have a most amazing guest on the show. His name is Jason Hayes, and uh, Jason provides a management lead on consulting, marketing, and sales, providing comprehensive advisory services, which include strategic collaboration with developers, owners, and architects, the creation of compelling brands and marketing position, advice on creation of distinctive and unique marketing materials and intelligent, honest, and experienced brokerage, his company, LuxuryProperty.com. Welcome to the show. How are you, Jason? I'm incredibly. Thank you so much for that amazing welcome. There you go. And is your, is, did I get the name of your company right, or did I just name the .com? It's... No, no, LuxuryProperty.com. You there can't miss it. You okay. can't miss it. The world's <laughs> finest homes. There you go. And I, I, do you have any other plugs you want to do? Because I just did the plug for you on the dot .com. No <laughs> way. <laughs> I quite like the way you've done that. <laughs> yeah, normally I ask people for their plugs, and I'm just like, I think I just said it. You're on LinkedIn and Instagram, too, as well. I guess people can That's follow right, you Yeah, you'll find, you'll find us across all of the social media platforms. On LinkedIn, I'm known as the billion-dollar broker because that's pretty much every day of my life, to be fair. But to be honest with you, go to luxuryproperty.com for the world's finest homes. Is that too much of a plug? There you go. No, that's fine. That's great. In fact, let's talk about it some more. So a billion dollar brokerage, uh, a billion dollar homes and or, uh, what was it you said? A billion dollar? Billion dollar broker. Billion dollar broker. Was, is that all? Was trillion just not below the mark? Well, or something? I, I'm not quite. I don't genuinely. I'm still in the billion sort of range. Um, yeah. I find trillions just a little bit crass one shouldn't talk about money it's quite so much so i often take the view that if you can count it you're obviously not earning enough so yeah billion dollar break will work quite nicely there you go there you go as long as the check's clear right yeah. truly but you're in dubai so trillions probably going to be coming up on the markers uh, we're based in dubai it's the most incredible place on the planet and we don't pay tax so i hope mr biden isn't listening but uh, you know <laughs> the, the guys come on over i've got a couple of houses for you there you go. There you go. Now, you are also based in 25 different markets, to my understanding? That's right. Yeah. So we market homes across 25 different markets. So from obviously the Middle East, where we're headquartered, New York, Los Angeles, London, Miami, Paris, wherever you, uh, wherever you probably would wish to live, we're, uh, we're, marketing, uh, we're marketing homes there, yeah. So tell me about uh, how you got started in the business. Let's talk a little about you, and then we'll get to the company. How did you get started in this business? What got you in the field of luxury? properties look i when i left university i started my own uh, property company and i sold that quite successfully in 2007 and i've always been incredibly engaged and motivated by the digital space and i look at real estate and i look at the digital space and, and how how the two interact quite simply and with luxuryproperty.com it was very evident for me 
Caribbean at the time, and I was looking to buy a home in Los Angeles. And to be quite honest with you, if you're looking to buy something spectacular, something nice, there's no one digital destination to go to in order to buy that home. And that sort of sprung the idea of, hey, wouldn't it be a really good idea if you had one digital destination where if people were looking for homes of distinction, they could go to and search and click on and find spectacular homes. So through hard work and endeavour and blood, sweat and tears, not quite so much blood. I did want to try and assemble a desk. But I think through hard work and endeavour, we've created something that's quite unique and we're busy now trying to scale that. And the United States, of course, is on that target list for us. And property values in, in real estate is just hotter than heck right now. I see so many people talk about investing in it. There was a limited inventory of homes. And, and here in America, like just lumber prices are off the chart to build new homes. The the new home market or the, the home selling market is huge. I just saw some sort of crazy, I think it was it was one of those San Francisco fixer uppers sold for a million dollars, which I think was a thousand dollars per square foot. And it's, it's like a junker. It's one of those things that you're going to apply and just rebuild. So tell us about luxuryproperty.com. What a great .com, by the way, because that thing, luxuryproperty.com, boom, right there. Tell us about the website, how it interacts and how people can either buy or sell or work with you guys on uh, their properties. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we built the website. We we started with, with the wireframes and we all, all of the all of the tech, etc. We built. We we had a team in India that were helping us do it, and then we outsourced some stuff to Europe. The website enables clients around the world who are looking to sell their homes. It's got an e-commerce functionality, so you mm-hmm. log on luxuryproperty.com backslash advertise. You log on. You uh, upload, create an account. It takes about three seconds. Upload your photographs, upload your description, upload your unique content. You know, does it have a hot tub or a barbecue? If it doesn't have a hot tub and a barbecue, why doesn't it? Does it have a? Uh, does it have a? Does it have spectacular sort of views of etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera? And then you run your credit card, and uh, for uh, a very reasonable sum, might I say, we go live with your with your listing. We reach millions of users every single month from the four corners of the globe. And the leads go directly to the advertiser. So really simple model. Sometimes the best ideas are the most are the most simple ones. And the leads go directly to to that client. So it could be the person putting the property up, could be a realtor in the United States, or indeed it could be it could be a a homeowner as well. We've got a brokerage. Sorry. We've got a brokerage business in Dubai. So in Dubai, we market, we're known as Dubai's luxury brokerage and property prices over here are going crazy across all 25 markets, with the exception of Russia, but we won't mention that. Uh, Across all 25 markets, it's going nuts at the moment. Double digit growth across all markets year to date. And a lot of that's come from the pandemic. A lot of that has come from people living in their homes and then all of a sudden having a little bit of a sort of cognizant uh, approach to what it's actually like to live in a property. For many of us, we get up, we grab a shower, we have breakfast, we dash out the door, we're at work all day, we're having supper, going to the gym, doing whatever. We come home and we, we go to sleep. We don't actually stay, spend that much time in the property. And of course, what we found has happened is People have been spending more and more time in their homes, and now they're realizing, hey, you know what? I need extra space. I need a home office. I need a a gym or whatever it might be that they want in their home. And that's what's fueling the the growth, and everyone's worried. I think deep down, we're all worried that we're going to get hit with this pandemic again, and we're going to be stuck with our wives, or we're going to be stuck with our children, and we want more space so that we can get through it better the second time around. And I'm really hoping my wife is not going to watch this <laughs> podcast. Otherwise, I'm in a, I'm in a whole heap of trouble. If, uh, if yeah, that sounds, this sounds like a you problem on that one. Yeah, but uh, no, and honestly, people have been losing their minds. They're stuck in, uh, they're stuck in, a, they're stuck in the homes and, and uh, they're dealing with everything. I, like we mentioned pre-show, I got a lot of friends that are, their, their wives are going, we're going to get divorced. <laughs> yes, well, i've done that divide by two and it's very expensive so that's never gonna happen that's never gonna happen but, but i think as well i think a lot of people are like i think as well they've had a re they've looked deep at themselves and they've gone you know what we're not going to travel we're not going to go to 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 carbo or to 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 whistler or wherever it might be and they're putting that money that they were spending on consumables back into their back into their homes and, and upgrading homes accordingly and we're also seeing a lot of people 
coming out of condos because of that multi-living aspect and, and taking taking standard homes. So uh, yeah, it, really interesting time. Great. It's a great time to be a real estate broker, I can assure you. It's really interesting because it's very different than what happened after the 2008 crisis. I remember we, we get these bags of, what do we call it? Jingo mail. People are just mailing in their keys to their home. And what was weird about that was they were keeping their credit cards in their expensive cars. And in the mortgage business, we'd never seen that where people had flipped the model and you always need a place to sleep at night. So normally people wouldn't give up their homes, but there was a lot of non occupied homes. So they were sending those keys in as well. But uh, yeah, this is a total flip model. And I think it's going to take a while for inventory to catch up to, yeah. to housing. It's going to probably take two or three years. Some places like Las Vegas, they, one of the things that created the boom in Las Vegas real estate wise was uh, uh, constructor, construction people took the, their plans and their stuff they were going to build off the market for two or three years after 9-11 because they're, they were like, wait, I think we're going to recession. Maybe we shouldn't build. Who knows what's going to happen? And that created that housing glut. And uh, now we're in the same thing where it's probably going to take two or three years for that to catch up if it yep. ever does. Yeah. Well, that, that supply demand matrix is always so sensitive and it's always, you know, the analysis that goes into that is very deep. What's happened with this pandemic is it's thrown all of that analysis out of the window and people's behaviours have changed. And I think I think that's going to, it's going to take some time for, certainly going to take some time for inventory to come back. And in the meantime, uh, the cost of money is, is affordable. More, mortgage rates are, are low and they're, they're not at the low lowest they've ever been, but they are hugely attractive. And of course, governments around the world have floated the economies. The British have got, they've ordered more trees in order to print more money at the moment, uh, giving it to anyone. <laughs> yeah, I think we've done um, the same here in America. Yeah. So, so, you know, so basically the governments are floating the economy and the furlough schemes and things that have happened across Europe and again in, the, in North America as well, basically means that people were able to keep up their mortgage payments and keep things going. Yeah. It's really fascinating times. So it's, it's rather interesting. Yeah, yeah. Now, the other thing, the aspect that's really interesting about your site is I see here that it has, the, I, I don't know if this is current, but it's 6 million impressions that it takes and provides to, to people across the, the globe there. That was probably this afternoon's figures. I would have, I would imagine it's probably up at 18 million by now. We're hugely busy. When the, mm -hmm. when the data sometimes comes through, I'm often challenging my digital director and asking him to double check. We had, I think it was the month before last, we hit 222 countries. Now, my geography isn't that good, but I think that's more than there are countries in the world. And apparently Google have territories that sort of uh, add up so our reach is very broad and probably because we're you know our, you know our, our brokerage being headquartered here in Dubai we've got so many international people moving to Dubai you know Dubai did a a marvelous job of managing the pandemic and it's, it's a truly wonderful place to live and I think that's part of the reason that we get so much international traffic people looking at gorgeous homes over here on the beach there you go. And you also have mobile apps uh, that can access your website as well. Yeah, yeah. So we're on the uh, Google Play and the iStore with our apps, and they're hugely, they're hugely popular. We, we are a prop tech business that does real estate. That's the way we like to think of ourselves. And it's really interesting. The fundamentals behind looking for real estate haven't really changed digitally that much since my first website in 1995. You are first and foremost looking for something in a specific area, a specific type of property, and then you're, you're led by how good the photography is or how good the videography is or indeed the 360 walkthroughs and that sort of thing. So we just make sure that we create technical applications that are light and intuitive and with good UX so that people can very quickly come through, click, book viewings, that sort of thing. So it's all done in-house as well. And it's it's, it's quite good fun uh, when, we're, when we're in the middle of changing it and updating it and that sort of thing. There you go. So you can find properties to buy, rent, short term, off plan. You can find different agents to work with, international stuff, no matter where it is. What is off plan stuff? What is that? So basically, that's new development projects. So, okay. yeah. So over here, we've got 
probably 150 projects across the city. So they could be they could be towers or they could be uh, villa communities or whatever it might be. And uh, it, it's hugely popular. So you, you're buying it, so you're probably buying at about 30 or 40% undervalue. So by the time the, the project gets delivered, there's some significant uplift in capital values at the time of completion. So a lot of people invest in off-plan projects. We're actually doing an event tomorrow evening on a on an off-plan project. So a really good way to uh, to make money. The uh, the payment plans for the apartments and things are very attractive, wow. and the yields are great. So like you can generally make about eight or nine percent yield in Dubai, where the rest of the world is probably running at about three or four percent. Wow. Sounds like Dubai is just, it's just Dubai has always been a crazy sort of uh, setup with the, the building and everything going on there. So I guess Dubai is really hot. It's really awesome there. It is the most incredible place on the planet. I'm very lucky to have traveled all over the world with my job and my company. Very lucky to have lived in some amazing places as well, your country being one. And I loved it, albeit they didn't get my sense of humor. That's probably, but Dubai is amazing. It truly is quite amazing. It, Everything, world-class health care, world-class education for the children, even the speeding ticket to arrive on your cell phone. So you're driving down the road and then click, and then next it comes to you on your cell phone, you press click and then pay and it's done. It's rather, it's quite, it truly is quite fascinating. And I think the, everything that we would do in the States or at home in the United Kingdom, we can do over here. Scuba dive in the morning, they literally go skiing in the afternoon. We've got our indoor slopes and things. Holy here. crap. Oh, so, the indoor slopes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and it truly is. It's quite, it's quite an incredible city with zero crime. That's the bit that people don't sometimes understand. Zero, zero, zero crime. You don't have, if I go to my Range Rover now, I bet I haven't locked it because I've never locked it. I don't even know how to lock it. Are you serious? I like, promise you, there's no crime in Dubai. Zero. So we've got this sort of incredibly tolerant society where there's mutual respect. You're not, you know, strict rules, of course. You're not allowed to swear. You're not allowed to spit. You're not allowed to. If somebody cuts you up on the freeway, you can't gesticulate to oh, them. Oh, uh, really? You can't, you know, you'll get into trouble for that. Yeah, yeah, it's a great place. It's, a, it's an incredible city, and it's, there's so, always so much going on as well. There's always so much, so much going on. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. And of course, we've got Expo happening here in October of this year. So wow. again, the, the entire world will be here. Chris, you can come and do your podcast here. We'll host you. I should. I should. It sounds yeah. like I need to. The only part is the swearing. I'll probably end up in jail the way I swear. Put some sort of, when I walk around in public, I'll have, to have a sensor <laughs> mask. Like, yeah, but that's interesting. I've always been intrigued by Dubai and stuff. Just You see how far it's gone, like the old pictures of when it was just sand and then how it just... <laughs> It's just crazy, some of the stuff that it does. So it's just amazing. The infrastructure projects they do are, are incredible, truly incredible. About four years ago, these plans arrived on my desk and they were going to put a canal around around the heart of the city. And I remember looking at it and thinking, this is something the Victorians would have done. And they would, it would have taken them 100 years to do it. So it was truly quite amazing. And then five years later, we're having lunch overlooking the canal and the canal wraps around the city and it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful and i think what they what they're excellent at doing is their their master plan developments there this is what we're going to do and then they deliver it they deliver it in a timely fashion and they deliver it to to the best of to the best of standards and and i think that's probably what sets the city apart and i suppose if we look at you know, if we look at uh, at Europe, by example, or or, or, or indeed North America, and, and we get we get so in in London, by example, Heathrow Airport have been asking for a runway, a fifth runway, or whatever it is, and they're going through consultation after consultation after consultation. A decade later, we still don't have the runway. Meanwhile, over here in Dubai, we've built ten airports. <laughs> Holy that, crap! That's the sort of difference, you know, to to the way that the guys do things here. It's very much a a can do attitude. So for entrepreneurs like myself, it's uh, it's manner from heaven. You know, it, it's a sort of hotbed of of entrepreneurial spirit. That is amazing, man. I need to look at more. <laughs> Maybe I'll just move there. It sounds like I always like Vegas because Vegas is always a lot of fun. And there's it's always a new town, the way it rebuilds itself. But yeah, it's wow. Yeah, it's a little, it makes Dubai makes it sound like uh, just uh, I don't know a boring old place. 
Like, I love Vegas. It's the most, uh, I think it's Cascata Golf Club is one of my favorite golf courses in the world, just outside of Vegas. And when I come to town, you can see Mr. Steve Wynn rubbing his hands together, thinking I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a fortune this evening uh, because he's, <laughs> Dubai's incredible. I think it's going to be one, we've handled the pandemic probably better than any country in the world, with the exception maybe of New Zealand and Australia, who've done a rather good job as well. And I think we've we've got more people vaccinated per capita than anybody else in the world. And our mortality rate wow. is, is, is one of the lowest in the world. For the last six months, maybe maybe even longer, we've been running and operating. The office has been open, people have been having lunch, people have been doing things. We're still wearing masks, we're still social distancing, but we haven't been on, on, on lockdown. I think our lockdown period was about four weeks, if I remember correctly, or maybe six weeks max. Wow. Yeah, so the guys have done a great thing. And then, of course, coming back to the tech side of things, if you were coming out of lockdown, you just went onto the app and you, you got the permit to go and do whatever you needed to do, etc. So the guys have been really super clever about protecting the nation and protecting the residents that are here with the COVID pandemic. And that's what's, in many respects, what's attracted everybody to the Emirates. And that's what's attracted everybody to Dubai in terms of buying real estate. That and the fact that we don't pay any tax, which is just a minor, minor little thing. That's definitely a major thing. That's one of the things I always loved about Vegas is they don't have any state tax there. So there's yeah, that. We don't have any tax. It's a three-letter word. It's banned. Tax. We don't have income tax, capital gains tax, inheritance tax. Nope, nope, nope. We don't Nothing do at all? Wow. Nothing at all. There's VAT. So there is VAT at 5%, which is like a value added um, tax, but no personal income tax or personal tax at all. So, so if you make a dollar, you. That is rather pleasant, isn't it? Yeah. That's crazy, man. I need to move. Jason, uh, it's been wonderful covering this with you. Anything more we need to know about you and the business and luxuryproperties.com? Hey, look, luxuryproperty.com, if you're a realtor in the United States and you want to reach the world's audience for your high-value home, you need to log on to luxuryproperty.com, click on advertise and watch the video and it will show you everything that you need to do. We are going places. I think we are a, we're a startup. We're a small little company and we've gone from zero to $10 billion worth of listings in a short space of time. And we are definitely heading in the right direction so one day you will you will be finding your home on luxuryproperty.com i'm definitely sure of that there you go there you go jason it's been wonderful to have on the show thanks for spending some time with us today and giving us a lowdown on what you're doing and and everyone should go download your apps and go to your website and check it all out thank you so much for having me i look forward to seeing you guys here in dubai for expo 2021 I'll definitely check it out. Do you have the .com on the Expo 2021? I don't have the .com on that. Okay, we can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Xpay.com, I'm sure you'll find it. <laughs> yeah, I've got a book coming out later this year, so hopefully I'll be doing some speaking in Dubai and we'll get a chance to hang out. I'm looking forward to that, my friend. Really looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Jason. Thanks to my audience for tuning in. Go to youtube.com for just Chris Voss. Hit the bell notification button. Go to goodreads.com for just Chris Voss. Our group's on Facebook, LinkedIn, and all those different places. Thanks to everyone for being here, and we'll see you guys next time.